Hello everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are watching yet uh, the next video installment for the Neki BU Mira. And I'm gonna take you through, this is a procedure I've, I think I videoed on different machines, including Singers. And I'm basically going to um, remove this bobbin case. It's actually not fully installed properly, but we'll go ahead and pull it out. And we have in there one of those beautiful aluminum necky bobbins made in Italy. Um, I know I geek out on things like bobbins, but even the bobbins were made better back in the day. And here, um, first I thought this might be a thread uh, remnant, but it's actually uh, the thread coming from the, uh, the bobbin case. And your bobbin case uh, deserves respect. So be sure, let me change the angle here, be sure to, uh, to treat it respectfully because the bobbin case is super important and there's more to it. It's not just a shell that holds the bobbin. It's, it's actually spring-loaded. It's incredibly important to the, to the quality of your stitches. So uh, now what I'm going to do just to, to, so I can get to the bobbin case itself, I'm going to cut the thread uh, and I, this could be, this could be 50 year old thread, you know, um, I typically don't use old thread unless it's in good shape because uh, if I pull on it and it breaks too easily, it might be dry rotted. That didn't break, but you can see someone has gotten the different colors on here. Uh, and I'm going to, I don't particularly care for that, so I'll be fixing that. Okay, so now that we are free of the bobbin and the, the, the thread that it holds, here's what we've got. This is the bobbin case. And... Take a look, it's sitting here. I'm not gonna pull the thread out backwards because that the, the bobbin case does not like that and neither does your, uh, your tension assembly for your upper thread. You always wanna pull any thread that you're gonna remove, pull it out the same direction, the same direction that you installed it originally. So, well, actually, it's kind of interesting. Look at that. The top here, there's actually a little hole right there in the top of the top of the, uh, the finger of the bobbin. Well, they went all out, apparently. Um, so let's see if I can get a good close-up for you guys. If that'll show up in today's light. Look at that. Um, you're not used to seeing a little hole right up here. So again, they often went the extra mile. So I'm going to look inside. Looks pretty good. I don't see rust. Uh, that's really nice because sometimes these pieces, you know, they have a lot of friction with the bobbin spinning in them and they uh, sometimes they lose their their nickel or chrome plating. I am going to take um, a cotton swab and clean. I don't think this one's going to pull up all that much dirt, but I'll clean it. And then we're going to oil it. Now, oiling a bobbin case is different than oiling other areas of the machine. Because if you put, it's very easy to put too much oil in a bobbin case and then you just got a greasy mess and your, your thread's gonna get all oily. So you wanna be extra careful. So I'm gonna, I just put this Q-tip down in, uh, down in some alcohol and you can see, you know, it's pulling out some old dirt, probably old oil. Uh, not terribly bad though. I've seen a lot worse. Um, and even up in here, I don't really see a lot of grime or goop. So when you start putting all of this, all of these little observations together, I, this is why I've got, I'm of the opinion that this machine just did not get used very much over its lifetime. So I'm going to take, um, and I'm going to put a drop of oil here and one here. And I'm going to put even one over here on the inside. Now, when I do this, it makes the bobbin case's job easier, right? Because a bobbin case has, you know, parts that move. They're spring-loaded. You know, you got this piece here. Notice when I pull up, watch, watch how it moves. Okay, you'll see it on this side too. It's kind of an awkward thing for me to grab a hold of in front of the camera here, but let's see if this shows up. Do you see when I when I let when I let this lever move, there's a piece here. Oh, I need a pointer. There's this piece moves. 
And so bobbin cases, again, they're more complex than you might think. So keeping it clean, and now I've oiled it, but unlike other, type, other areas of the machine that I oil, now I'm gonna go back and take a dry cotton swab and just mop up some of it, right? Because I don't need a lot. In fact, I need very little. Uh, I have a micro oiler, but sometimes it just, yeah, the micro oiler ends up getting more oil on things too. Um, so again, do you want to just take take a absorbent cotton and just go around and get get that excess off? You just wanted a little bit. You don't need a ton. So there we go. There's our bobbin case. Next up, <clears throat> some of you may remember watching me take off the race cover of a much older Singer, and I had to actually. Uh, there were screws I had to undo. It was kind of a more involved affair. Beautifully built machine, but just more to it. Over time, companies such as Neki and, and others, Japanese, they started making new ways to, 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 to access this. So these little, uh, they're, like, they're like clamps in a way, clips. And they, they're kind of... Um, they just, they're like flippers on a, on a pinball machine. You flip them back and, and now the, the race cover comes right off. Or so we think. Actually, this one actually, it actually swings down like so. And then I can do what I was looking to do, which is to remove the hook. So the hook, of course, is a, is a very important part of your, I don't know what that is, some kind of dust or dirt. Um, this isn't bad, guys. This is actually not bad at all uh, compared to some I've seen. But again, I'm going to go inside and clean this. Now, if I just didn't address this, if I just put in a bobbin and put thread in it and just squirted some oil in the rest of the machine and left this alone, this machine would sew. I have no doubt that it would. But you know what? The person who gets this is going to be getting a machine that was fully overhauled, restored, and it really needs that. It needs to be set back uh, you know, this area was designed to be clean, not every time you sew with it, but there's a reason why it's accessible. And so that's what I'm basically going to do. The first thing I want to do is get my lint brush and we'll go in here and do, you know, again, what you guys saw me doing on the, on, in the other areas of the machine, the side and the other side. checking to make sure everything is where it should be. And now I'm going to take a cotton swab and some alcohol. And I'm going to go in here. Uh, the, 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 the race has a rim, which it will often catch dust, oil. You can see little uh, bits of that coming off there. Let me pan back just a bit. And you want to get this stuff out. <clears throat> so that when you're ready to start sewing, you're starting with a clean slate. And again, this is not, it's not like cleaning your feed dogs or having, you know, to oil the machine with each, with each new project. This is something you really have to kind of gauge on your own to decide, okay, do I need to do this today? Is it, you know, is it, how dirty is it? You know, does it, how much does it need? Um, but again, so many of these videos that I make, I'm showing you guys what, oh, there's a piece of thread. I don't know where that came from, but stuck in there somewhere. Um, let's just assume that, like I say, those of you who are watching this, uh, very likely maybe you've just gotten a sewing machine, whether it's a Neki or some other, and you're like, oh, it's not sewing quite right, but it does move, the needle moves up and down. Um, Let's grab a hold of the hand wheel and let's get the shuttle over here so I can get to this side. Um, and again, I want to get my cotton swab with the alcohol on that rim and come down. You can see the, the filth that was on there. Again, will the machine sew? Very possibly, but it will be a lot happier and so will you if you give it uh, a fresh start. And that's what we're going to do because you know, we're not doing anything that, that, you know, wasn't intended. It was intended to, to, uh, 
the engineers knew that this needed to be maintained or they wouldn't have given access to this section of the machine. It's also helpful to get in here when you, um, if you get a thread jam, right, a piece of thread breaks off and gets caught or something, that is um, another reason why you, you would want to, to come in here and, and clean things up, right? Um, once you've gotten this done, you know, it should be, should be clean for a while. It's not, uh, again, it's not anything you need to um, do every time you sew a project, but you do need to do it. Okay, now, you guys remember I had the, the hook. The hook itself, this one's fairly clean, but, but often I get them, and they're not. There's, there's oil or, or old uh, lint, goo, mud. Um, I, call, I call lint and oil together mud because that's what it reminds me of. And it's, it's, that's about how fun it is to take off. But um, it's not hard. You just want to have patience, right? This is the edge. This, this edge runs around the rim of that race, right? So it needs to be cleaned. You come inside and you want to just go again underneath. Uh, I've got one of my, I pulled out one of those precision tip Q-tips, you know, the ones that are a little bit more pointed and less likely to shed. You don't have to use them for everything, but you definitely, I would definitely use it whenever you're, uh, you can see, see what just came off there? That needs to come off, right? That could, that could have taken decades to build up, but we don't want it in there when we're getting ready to use, whoa, a big chunk of dust there. You don't want that in your shuttle hook, right? Um, sometimes I, I, <laughs> I imagine uh, sometimes uh, a viewer may see this and think, oh my God, these old machines are so much maintenance and work. But remember, this is restoration and overhauling. This is not normal maintenance. I try to remember to say that in all these videos. So any of you who are new to my channel or new to this period, don't get freaked out and think, oh my gosh, you know, I don't think I want to deal with a, this, this is so much maintenance. But it's really, um, this is really just getting the machine woken and, and back to a level, level playing field. And anyway, that looks, that looks pretty, pretty sharp. This was easy. I've had some that were really filthy and I had to work harder. Now I'm going to take, <clears throat> there are two ways you can do this. You can put a drop or two of oil on the race uh, rim itself. Or I'm just going to put it right here. I'm going to put it, whoops, put a drop there and that's it. Now I'm actually, I may want to take some of that excess off because remember this is, um, this hook and, and your whole hook and shuttle area near your bobbin case, this is where a lot of lint falls. And so too much oil means you're going to have issues with lint and that's not something that you want. So, so I've, you've seen me, I've put the hook back and that oil actually, the new oil will actually, so most of the time it will help hold the hook in place so it doesn't go flopping out on you when you try to um, put it all back together. And we'll put this in. Snap, now she's back tight. So now I've got my bobbin case, and I've got my bobbin, and I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to get, uh, what? People, people, you know, over the years, they would, instead of winding a whole bobbin, if they were using different colors, they would do this, and I, it, it, I just have to get it off. Otherwise, as soon as you're sewing, it stops. Um, so I really prefer not to have that. But anyway. Uh, I'll be uh, probably just uh, winding the bobbin with new thread when I get ready to test the machine. We're not anywhere near there, so I'm just going to put the bobbin back. I don't even, I'm not even going to load the thread in the bobbin. I just want to keep it there so it, I know where it is. And if I hold, those of you who are new, if you take the bobbin and, and you put it on, the bobbin, <clears throat> the, excuse me, the bobbin case, if you hold it like this, the bobbin's going to plop right out. So if you hold it by holding the lever, then the bobbin stays put and it allows you to install it back onto the shuttle. So uh, again, just another reminder. I uh, don't know if you guys can see this. Right down here, I need to get this a little bit lower. 
so it's visible. Let's see. When you go to put this in, there's a little notch right up here at the top, right there. And that notch needs to line up with what I call the finger or the ear of the bobbing case, right like that. So I'm going to put that in. My hands are large, so it's a little awkward trying to do this and not smack the camera, but hopefully we'll get it in there. And Now, if you ever go to put this in and it doesn't want to go, don't force it because sometimes you need to turn the hand wheel to get the, the hook in a different position, right? So just play with it, <clears throat> but don't let that throw you. And uh, but the bobbin case is in there. It's in there solidly. If it wasn't, it would just roll right out. So there you go. Uh, we are making our way uh, through this um, overhaul restoration of the Neki BU Mira. Thought I would show this to you guys. Now I think uh, I think we just got the hand wheel left, and hopefully we'll uh, be getting to uh, crank her up soon. Thank you all for watching. Uh, stay tuned as I get this machine ready. Let's see, I've already finished the I finished the Singer 403. I've got this Neki and um, that's I think that's all I've got for the moment. It's like I say the the pickings have been slim lately for finding sewing machines to rescue but hopefully there will be more. Uh, they're not rare or in short supply just people are sewing with them right now. But anyway if this was helpful to you in any way, leave some comments down below there. I appreciate you all watching, and we will see you next time.